One thing's for sure, muscle soreness is part of a fighter's training, especially when you head out to Thailand to train. But is muscle soreness the sign of a good training session? How can you avoid being too sore? Should you train if you're really sore? And how can you reduce muscle soreness the quickest? There's quite a bit to unpack on this subject, so let's get started. Fighters, welcome back to another episode of Heatrick Muay Thai Performance. In this episode, everything a fighter must know about delayed onset muscle soreness, aka DOMS. Before we tackle why you get sore and what you can do about it, I wanna jump right in and answer the question, is DOMS a bad thing? Or is it actually a sign of a good training session? We'll start with what DOMS is good for. If you're looking to gain some muscle mass, then it's desirable to chase some mild muscle soreness as it shows you're working at intensity that would encourage muscle gain, muscle hypertrophy. That said, most fighters aren't looking to do this. Rather than bodybuilding, we look to optimize power to weight ratio within a weight class. And that means focusing on better neuromuscular firing of the existing muscle fibers we have, rather than creating bigger, bulkier, and slower muscles. I'll link to an article explaining this in greater detail for you on the show notes page. The bad side of DOMS for a fighter, aside from feeling uncomfortable, and that may be understating it a bit, is the negative effect it has on your subsequent training sessions. You can expect varying degrees of strength loss, pain, muscle tenderness, stiffness, and swelling. Strength loss usually peaks immediately after exercise or within the first 48 hours. Muscle forces can drop by as much as 60% and aren't always fully restored until eight to 10 days later. Pain and tenderness peaks within one to three days after exercise and takes about seven days to fully subside. Stiffness and swelling peaks within three to four days after exercise and typically takes 10 days to get back to normal. As a fighting athlete, you can see how this isn't going to help you train at your best or make the best progress in the week following an exercise bout that's caused you significant DOMS. Strength loss will not only prevent you performing strength actions to the best of your ability, but also will negatively affect power and speed output too. Pain and tenderness will obviously affect the quality of your sparring. You'll be more distracted by exaggerated discomfort when receiving blows, and your skilled movement patterns will also be compromised as well. Stiffness and swelling will reduce your range of motion, further restricting your ability to move properly, and care must be taken not to practice and repeat poor skilled movements. This is a prime consideration when learning new skills, because we know from motor pattern learning research that you can easily automate a bad habit with just three to 500 poorly performed reps, wiring in a poor movement engram, a bad habit that will take thousands of repetitions to correct. I'll link to a video and article going into this for you in the show notes page with this episode. Because fighters demand power, flexibility, and highly skilled movements, DOMS doesn't indicate a good training session. Rather, it's something we should minimize while chasing improved performance. But how can we avoid excessive DOMS in the first place? And how can we recover from it as quickly as possible when it does show up? We'll start by briefly exploring why you get sore in the first place. Although research hasn't nailed down exactly what's going on when we feel pain and stiffness in the muscles following an unfamiliar exercise, we know that it tends to start within six to eight hours, typically peaks between two to three days later, and follows a certain sequence of events. First, there's mechanical damage to the skeletal muscle as a result of the exercise. This in turn sets off an inflammatory response and swelling, which then results in a sensation of pain. Understanding this sequence allows us to tackle DOMS using targeted methods at each stage, with the first stage representing opportunities to minimize or prevent DOMS in the first place and the second two stages, opportunities to recover from DOMS quicker and minimize its effect. First up, what causes mechanical damage? We know that muscle soreness is a result of damage caused by doing something that you're not used to. This could be suddenly increasing the amount of exercise, more time, sets and reps, or performing a new movement through a different range of motion. We also know that eccentric lengthening muscle actions, like when you lower a weight, are responsible for the soreness, not the concentric shortening actions, like when you lift the weight up. And that isometric bracing holding muscle actions sit somewhere between the two. Exercises that cause eccentric actions are the ones that will make you the most sore. Things like lowering the weight, as I've said, running downhill, stopping and turning in shuttle runs, or landing from jumps. Secondary to this, 
Isometric actions can also hit you fairly hard. Things like holding static holds at the bottom of a push-up or at the top of a chin-up, bracing the core on an ab rollout, or resistance your head being pulled down in the clinch. Whereas concentric muscle actions aren't responsible for the soreness. Things like lifting the weight, running, jumping up, or throwing punches and kicks. DOMS doesn't strike those that are unfit, rather it affects those that are unprepared for a specific quantity or type of exercise. I mentioned in a previous video that a five minute shuttle run fitness test in the morning caused elite Muay Thai fighters a lot of DOMS in their legs by the afternoon session. The stopping and turning at each end of the shuttle caused eccentric muscle actions and turned out to be an unfamiliar loading too. Our first priority is to prevent mechanical damage as much as possible. No damage, no DOMS. However, for training to be progressive and to continue to make you a better fighter, your training stimulus must evolve over time and become more demanding. And anytime you introduce something new to your training, there's a strong chance you'll experience some DOMS initially. But to make sure it's minimal, here are my recommendations. Start small, don't jump steps. Introduce any potentially new exercise or training method at a lower intensity and with a smaller training volume. That's duration or number of sets and reps. If you suddenly double the length of time that you train, the distance that you run or intensity, you'll get sore. Fighters new to resistance training should certainly be mindful of progressively adding this mode of training into their programs in manageable increments. Increases in training volumes of no greater than 20% each week will allow for sufficient adaptation. Not only will this help prevent DOMS, but progressive overload is the cornerstone to effective long-term athletic development. Just because you can, doesn't mean you should. Don't be tempted to skip steps that will improve your performance and prevent you from prematurely hitting a glass ceiling or performance plateau. Keep an eye on how many eccentric yielding movements you have in your training program, such as slowly lowering a weight, running downhill, landing from jumps. Understand that these movements, even in small doses, will potentially cause the most soreness. Working a muscle too hard in an unfamiliar range of motion will also cause soreness. To protect against that, progressively program exercises that use a full range of motion to keep your body prepared. And of course, your mobility will be greatly improved too. The only proven method of protecting against DOMS and preventing exercise-induced damage is to perform a prior bout of similar eccentric contractions at a lower intensity. This method is known as repeated bout effect, or RBE, and appears to last for a few weeks as opposed to days. However, it's important to emphasize that the RBE only transfers to subsequent bouts of exercise if it's extremely similar to the initial bout. Research has also found that an initial bout of eccentric exercise of less than 10% of the volume of the subsequent bout is enough to reduce DOMS and promote faster recovery due to RBE, even up to two weeks later. Therefore, to benefit from the protection of repeated bout effect, it's not necessary to perform a high number of eccentric muscle actions. However, as well as the number of eccentric actions, it's important to consider the range of motion to create an effective RBE. And if you're looking to introduce a new exercise or activity into a training program, consider adding similar movements to your warm up in the preceding week or two. Even just one lighter set can stop you getting sore when you hit that movement for real in the next block. For example, even just one set of 10 push ups this week will help minimize DOMS that you could experience doing 10 sets of 10 push ups, 100 reps the next week. Simply pre-training specific muscle groups provides better protection from future more severe training. And this should also be considered when a fighter returns from a layoff from training too. In a similar vein, pre-exercise warm-up has been shown to be effective in reducing DOMS, while incidentally cool downs don't reduce soreness. So make sure you're extra thorough with your progressive warm-up in sessions, introducing a new exercise or training variation that potentially could cause mechanical muscle damage. Sporadically hitting the body with a novel training stimulus isn't going to help your body stave off muscle damage and the resulting muscle soreness. If despite loading progressively, the same exercise activity continually makes you sore, your train frequency is likely too low. You must train it more often. Also along these lines, consider keeping your exercise selection more consistent as you move through subsequent training blocks. By swapping out only key exercises and maintaining consistency with others, 
while of course changing intensity, sets and reps to match the focus of your training block, you can better protect yourself against DOMS too. Moving on from the mechanical damage stage of DOMS, where the emphasis is on preventing soreness, now let's take a closer look at both the inflammation and swelling and pain stages, which will help you recover from and treat DOMS once you have it. Active recovery strategies are preferred to passive ones to remove waste products in the blood, increase pain-free range of motion, increase muscle performance and strength, increase tolerance to pain and pressure on the muscles, produce higher total quality recovery, and reduce the feeling of heavy legs. Active recovery contributes to both physiological and psychological benefits for a fighter and a greater motivation to train. In short, we want to keep you moving. In fact, it's worth pointing out here that further exercise won't adversely affect soreness. It can only help. However, it's also true that anything you do will only temporarily reduce the soreness through exercise-induced analgesia. The emphasis is on keeping moving. This pain-reducing analgesic effect is produced in two ways. Light to moderate localized concentric shortening muscle movements result in exercise-induced analgesia in those working muscles. Light aerobic exercise, 60 to 70 percent of maximum heart rate, creates a general exercise-induced analgesia throughout the entire body. So let's look at the best performing recovery strategies. Jogging and steady running are effective choices as they combine both localized muscle contractions and general aerobic heart rate demands to create the analgesic pain-reducing effect. Even better, light swimming or aqua exercise combines light concentric only exercise, aerobic exercise, and a hydro-massaging effect. The water resistance means there's no eccentric muscle actions at all. I'd have to say, if you've managed to cripple yourself with DOMS, getting in the pool would be my best recommendation. But for me, the gold standard for fighters looking to recover from DOMS is without a doubt shadow boxing. It typically reduces pain by about 40 to 45%. You'll benefit from the analgesic effects of both local muscle contractions all over the body and the general aerobic contribution too. And you'll bank some skill specific practice, which will sharpen up your movement time and overall response time as a fighter. I love a two for one deal. And research using a Wii Sports boxing active game shows 20 minutes of aerobic boxing outperforms 20 minutes of either ice therapy or regular light resistance exercise in reducing DOMS. Speaking of ice therapy, although it does regulate inflammation and decrease DOMS symptoms from day one to two, I see it as a nice to have in addition to light exercise like shadow boxing, swimming or running because ice therapy demands extra time and is something fighters could also find less appealing. If you have time, I recommend cold water immersion as part of your weekly practice, not just to reduce inflammation and muscle soreness, but for the psychological training of determination and grit. But that's a topic for another time. Another mode of exercise shown to reduce DOMS is regular yoga. Interestingly, where static or dynamic stretching doesn't. It seems there are other benefits to yoga over merely stretching that come into play, like a variety of physical postures, breathing techniques, and meditation. It's also worth considering nutrition-based strategies to reduce inflammation and free radicals, those unstable atoms that can damage your cells as a result of intense training, illness, or aging. We also need to consider what supplements the IOC, International Olympic Committee, recommend, especially now that Muay Thai has Olympic recognition. And to be honest, right now, although some positive effects have been reported using supplements such as curcumin, tart cherry juice, beetroot juice, and quercetin, appropriate doses and durations haven't been determined. And any benefit gained from these supplements is dwarfed by the physical interventions we've already discussed. My advice would be to keep eating a range of healthy foods in the correct proportions to ensure your body is fit for withstanding the strains of your training. Make sure you're consuming anything between 1.2 and 2 grams of protein per kilo of body weight each day. That way, you're supporting the muscle repair and recovery process. Regularly consume carbohydrates to replace the muscle glycogen lost during exercise, which was fueling your muscle contractions. This will also help you spare your protein intake for recovery rather than refueling. And make sure you remain hydrated. That's a simple way to reduce muscle pain as muscles are a high percentage water and even mild dehydration can make DOMS feel worse. Finally, 
That leads us on to the final stage in the DOM sequence, specifically the pain. It seems that anti-inflammatory drugs such as ibuprofen, diclofenac, or ketoprofen have shown some benefits in reducing soreness, but the results are difficult to generalize. For fighters, a massage with Thai boxing liniment before training can be helpful. Other than the massaging action itself providing some benefit, the analgesic effect of the oil itself can also help you move better in that session. And going full circle, consistent movement is key, quality movement at that. Don't repeat poorly executed skilled movements that pollute your hard-earned motor pattern engrams. And learning a new fighting technique or skill when movement is sabotaged by DOMS could quickly reinforce bad habits that will take thousands of repetitions to correct. Also, do everything you can to plan your training not to cause undue mechanical damage in the first place by progressing training intensity and volume properly, avoiding excessive eccentric muscle actions, regularly using full ranges of motion, exploiting repeated bout effect, using progressive warm-ups, and not going too long between training certain movements and intensities. Coaches should make sure they distinguish between muscle strain and DOMS before prescribing an exercise and avoid programming training that develops maximum strength and power if a fighter has experienced DOMS in affected muscle groups due to that drop in strength and range of motion. It's also recommended that coaches don't introduce new eccentric movements such as plyometrics within 14 days of competition to prevent a fighter suffering from muscle damage that will impair their performance. Fighters that must train on a daily basis should be encouraged to reduce the intensity and duration of exercise for a day or two following intense DOMS-inducing exercise. Alternatively, exercises targeting less affected body parts will allow the sore bits to recover. Above all, it's good to train if you have DOMS, don't stop. And shadow boxing is more valuable than you probably realize. Thanks for listening. If you found this valuable, please like, subscribe, and share with someone else it could help too. Please give the podcast a review or comment below. We'd love to hear from you. As always, you can visit heatrick.com for more Muay Thai performance podcasts, videos, articles, and guides. Catch you next time.